Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I used to have this video, but I'm actually deleting it and redoing it here because uh, the old one is outdated. So let's talk about how to get RSSI into an on-screen display. There are a few ways of doing this. I'm only going to show you one way, and it's my personal favorite way of doing it. Uh, but one way is some of you have noticed that some receivers have a RSSI pad on the receiver itself. And then some receivers actually have an RSSI pin, like the D4R2 and I don't even know what the X8R has. But you can run a wire from these receivers directly to an on-screen display or to the RSSI pad on your flight controller then to your on-screen display. The way we are going to do it is actually by creating an output channel in our Tyrannus that will send the RSSI to the flight controller and then through that to the on-screen display. Doing this it will be 100% accurate. Towards the end of the video, I will show you the two different, I guess, kinds of on-screen displays. One way you have, you don't have to calibrate anything whatsoever, the other way you do. Now the only downside to this is you will have to use one channel. For those of us using SBUS receivers and getting 16 channels, that's really no big deal. You'll still have plenty of channels left over. Uh, if you have an 8 channel receiver like the D4R2 or any PWM receiver like the uh, X8R or something like that, then this could be a problem for you, but hopefully not. So next, we want to go to inputs. For you D4R2 guys, um, you want to do this in the first eight channels, obviously, because you only have eight channels. Now, those of us using SBUS, you can still place this anywhere you want. Uh, what, what I do personally is put it on channel 16 because then it's just out the way. I it's it's not going to be in between, like in the middle of all these and get me confused and all that. So, but like I said, you can put it anywhere you want. Channel 16 is just where I put mine. So uh, now just name it. You can name it anything you want. All right, now come down to source and find RSSI. Uh, whenever you pick RSSI, do not pick the RSSI plus or minus. You just want RSSI. Now come down to scale and set for 100. And that's it. We can now exit. Now page over once to Mixer. Once again, I will go back down to 16 just because that's where I placed it in my inputs. Then come down to weight, set this for 200. Then set offset to negative 100. And that's it. You're done. Now there's a few things we need to do in Betaflight. All right, so going into Betaflight, you can use Clean Flight. It, the, you can watch this video. Uh, the setup is almost exactly the same. Um, now, if we look here, our 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 RSSI is not working right now, and that's normal because we're not done yet. If we go to Receiver. If you look at RSSI's channel, right now it's disabled, uh, but one thing I'll need to point out, the roll pitch, yaw, and throttle in the trans itself actually counts as auxiliary channels, where in beta flight and clean flight, they start auxiliary one after that, but technically this is number five. So if we look down at auxiliary 12, that's actually channel number 16 where I have RSSI. So we're not this right here isn't going to go by these numbers it's actually going by the number that you put in your trans so I'm picking 16 because I put mine on 16 and then click Save but if we go back to setup this might for some of you it should be working now for some of you it is not for me it is not that is because you'll see here auxiliary 12 my RSSI right now is way more than 50%. It should be up here somewhere. But that's because in beta flight, and this does not apply to clean flight. In clean flight, it's already working. But in beta flight, you can do set augs, 
like set space aux enter and we see the max aux channels is six but the allowed range is up to 13 so we will just do set space max underscore aux underscore channels space equals space and I'm just going to do 12 because that's technically 16 in Betaflight. And then just type in save and enter. And now we see RSSI is working. If you look at your RSSI on your Tyrannus itself and in here at the same time, they will be exactly the same. Uh, and then if we go to receiver, because we enabled more auxiliary channels that previously were not, we now see that auxiliary 12 is even higher. Now that whole adding in more auxiliary channel things, if you're using a PPM receiver, you don't have to do that, obviously, because you don't have that many channels. And if you're using an SBUS receiver, you and you put your auxiliary channels somewhere uh, six or above, then you don't have to do that either. But because I have to be nitpicky and put mine on channel 16, I had to do that. Now as far as uh, getting it into your on-screen display, the two different ways. If you're using one of the newer flag controllers that has a built-in on-screen display capable of using this OSD feature, then all you do is just turn on RSSI value and that's going to place it right here and it's just automatically going to work it's going to be accurate your fucking shoulder will do all the work and just throw it in there no calibration nothing needed now if you are using a say like a minimum OSD micro or a minimum OSD or any other OSD where you can choose the firmware that you want on it so say you're using the uh, my favorite to use is MWOSD, also known as the MultiWi OSD firmware. If you put that on there, then you want to go to your uh, menu in the on-screen display. If you don't know how to do that, then uh, look in the description below. I'll place a link to my video showing you how to get into the menu. You want to page through the menu with this page arrow and get to this screen. You want to have Display RSSI turned on. Do not touch set RSSI. That's only if you were using the wire. Uh, use flight controller, uh, basically saying use the RSSI coming from your flight controller, turn that on. Use PWM, turn that off. Now this is another reason why I'm updating this video. In that the MultiWii or MWOSD firmware, it used to be 255. Now uh, I believe it's like 1028 or 1032, somewhere around that area. But basically, uh, just calibrate it yourself. All you have to do is set it, just set it to 1030, and then look at your RSSI up here. It will be constantly changing in real time, and then you can make this number go up and down, and just adjust it to where, uh, just stop whenever this matches exactly what's showing on your Tyrannus. And that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions or if I left anything out that I'm not thinking of, uh, leave it for me in the comment box below. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.